guys. Appreciate you guys having me. Um, I know it was early. I got up at like 4.30 to get here from Troutdale. I'm sure <laughs> some of you have that same story. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is just uh, what any good presenter should do is just talk about the overall content. We're going to talk about the agenda real quick, but I have like 45 minutes. That's going to fly by because we have so much to talk about, and I want to talk about all of it. Um, so basically, we called this on, on the little sheet that you got a survival guide. And then I realized nobody wants to survive in 2019. We want to thrive in 2019, right? So I created a new word. You now in front of you have a thrival guide, OK? Uh, the first uh, block there is the things that we want to do to survive. The next block is the things we want to do to thrive. Um, and we'll go through it a little bit. But honestly, guys, I don't really want to talk to you about marketing services uh, today. I want to talk to you more like I want, I want you to have a mental model shift in how you think about marketing for your company, and hopefully you'll get a golden nugget. So as I was doing this agenda, hopefully it'll work, go down, all right. So have you ever thought about what would happen if the cruise ship captain gave you control? That's what, what this presentation is gonna feel like. There's just so much good stuff. I was just zigzagging back and forth because I wanna tell you guys so much about customer experience. We're gonna talk a little bit about rethinking key marketing ideas and have that mental model shift in how you market your business. We're going to talk about hooking and converting an audience, whether that's, we're going to talk mostly about websites today. Social media is such a beast. I had to leave it out with 45 minutes, but a lot of the same principles will apply. And then we'll have uh, some case studies that you guys can learn from, some SEO tips and tricks, and some Google search ad tips and tricks, and even some sales like pitfalls. If you're working with other companies, some questions you might want to ask them. And then I put bonuses there because I think those two things are great, but I don't know if we'll have time to get to them. So I just put the word bonus there to make it sound like I finished on time. But uh, hopefully we'll get there because I have a crazy simple marketing strategy that works every single time. And then uh, if we can get down to it, some quick tips to maintain a five-star review. Um, funny enough, before we get started, there's a blank on your sheet right there under networking. I agree with Cindy, networking and joining BNI is the best thing I ever did for Cornerstone. We have the highest ROI of any marketing that we do right here at BNI in Oregon City. Um, funny enough, the blank is called Manage Local Listings, which is what Cami was talking to you guys about. It's incredibly important. And I want to show you why. So Devin, if you can cue up the, the video, I'll get the lights for you. Check this out, guys. This is why Manage Local Listings is so important. I think, I think all of us can relate to this experience. Hey, Aaron. Hey, I have been working on this presentation for like 72 hours straight. My back is like permanently shaped like a candy cane. Do you have any recommendations for a chiropractor? Oh yeah, go see Dr. Kasari. He's really great. Everybody at his office is awesome. I've been seeing him for years. Awesome, thank you. you have, you're a lifesaver. Thank you so much. All right, Dr. Kasari, say car, so, okay, sorry. No. Oh, okay, wait. Dr. Kasari, Portland. Dr. Kasari, Portland, Portland, Portland. New. No. Hey, Aaron, it's me again. I cannot spell this guy's name. Is it with a K, a C? Oh, yeah, just search Gentle Wellness Center. Oh, okay. Gentle Wellness Center. Oh, that's easier. Okay, perfect. Thank, thank you. Gentle Wellness Center. This is Elizabeth. Oh, awesome. Hey, I was curious. Do you guys take walk-ins? Yes, we accept walk-ins all day. Yeah, I'd love to get in today. It's going to be Mark Savage. S-A-V-A-G-E. I'm having some problems with spelling last uh, names today. Yeah, sir. We don't need your oh. name. Uh, you're, you're a walk-in. Sweet. Hey, Siri. Get directions to the Gentle Wellness Center. Getting directions to Gentle Wellness Center. It should take 41 minutes via a 4 West. Will do. Gentle Wellness Center. This is Elizabeth. Oh, hey, Elizabeth. Yeah, this is Mark Savage. I was, uh, I was trying to be one of your walk-ins. Like, I just pulled up your address uh, from Google Maps, and it says, uh, danger construction area, do not enter. Our old building was condemned, so oh. it was bulldozed uh -huh. about a year ago. I see how that could be confusing. Yeah, no, that, yeah, it's confusing. I totally agree. 
And you, man, have you guys ever thought about updating your? Google we're not account? interested. No, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Okay. It, well, anyway, where, where are you guys located? Our new location is about 10 miles down the road from you. Just make a right after the gas station, then a left, two more rights, one more left, and we're on the lower level of the gray building. Peach door. You can't miss us. Okay, sounds good. I'm heading over. New hours? Google Maps says they're open until 5. Hello? Hello? Dr. Kazari? don't want to have any Dr. Kasari experiences in here. Uh, but it's that simple, right? I mean, everything we're going to be talking today, guys, I wanted to boil it down to this. It's that simple. Um, people go online. They need a chiropractor. They search for your name. Dr. Hill comes up. We find his address. And hopefully, we don't end up at a condemned building that was taken down. Um, can you guys see this? You want me to turn the lights off so you can read? Is it good? All right. So I'm going to give you some quick stats here that really paint a picture on customer experience. Because if you, I think a lot of times, uh, if you don't realize that you're giving a bad customer experience, and once you fix it, all of a sudden things start to work much, much better for you. So 86% of participants are willing, right now 86% of your customers are willing to pay more money for you if you give them a better client experience. But here's the funny part. According to Harvard Business School, 80% of companies that took their survey said, hey, our customer experience is grand, fantastic. <laughs> Only 8% of their customers agreed with them. It's crazy. Uh, so here we want more personal experience, but yet 47% of organizations say they're going to be using chatbots to talk to you by 2021. Yet half of the market says, if you do that, we'll leave you because we want personalized communication from you. And 79% of customers will share a bad experience with you about you online, right? We all know how easy it is to get a negative review and how hard it is to get a positive review. But here's the worst stat, right? 91% of the people that don't complain about you online, they just leave your business. So you may not even know that you gave somebody a bad experience because they simply just walk away. And here's the worst stat of all. Only 23% of companies actually see improving their customer experience as one of their top three objectives this year. And yet it is effective of everything that we're going to talk about is effective from that, right? So here's what I want to get. These are a few mental model shifts that I want you guys to think about. When Devin and I talk to small business owners, they have a lot of anxiety because they're like, there are so many places that I need to be, right? We walked into uh, Bill Clark's office a while ago, and he's like, I just got on Twitter. I'm like, congratulations, right? Good job, Bill. Have you tweeted yet? Nope. Okay. <laughs> the, fir the first thing I told Bill to do was delete his Twitter account, right? Because A, he, he didn't really have a strategy to use it. He had no time to use it, and B, his target audience isn't on Twitter. So don't worry about being everywhere. Be worried about being where your specific audience is at. That's my first shift for you. The other thing is understanding conversion. So we talk to a lot of people, and I, I guarantee you 99% of the business owners we talk to say, oh, I track everything. How do you track it? Oh, I write down, you heard me on Google. You got me on my radio ad, right? So even if that information is true, which it's not true, because Dev and I use call tracking, and they'll find you from a Google paid ad, and they'll say that they found you from a friend of a friend. And then your receptionist doesn't have that backtracked information. So she doesn't actually know that the company should be spending money on the marketing that was part of the buyer's journey in the first place. So be careful about tracking just the conversion point, just when they became a client, right? That decision to buy. And start tracking the buyer's journey instead, right? Start thinking of your website and your marketing as touch points along the way because we consult about 13 resources before we make a buying decision. It's just too easy today to, to uh, research a company through Facebook and social media and all that kind of stuff. Is your marketing, marketing DOA? You would be amazed at how many people are doing marketing, spending a lot of money, thousands of dollars a month, and they don't have tracking. Or when a company sends them a report, they simply put it in you know, reports folder and they don't read it. You have to understand, before you start a marketing campaign, what are the KPIs? Does anybody know what KPI stands for? Come on, babe. Key performance indicators, Key performance indicators right? 
Now that's a really fan, if you say KPI at a dinner party, like, oh, dude, like smartest business owner ever. All it means is, hey, we want phone calls. And so I'm gonna track to see if I get phone calls. If I don't get phone calls, I'm, I'm gonna cancel you. Um, so you have to determine for yourself what those KPIs look like. And then of course, I love this one. I only spend 10% of my marketing budget or my, my business consultant uh, only told me to spend up to 10% on my marketing budget. I don't care if it's 5%, 50%, 30%. I think that what we need to do is calculate what we wanna spend on marketing based on our goals, what our profit margin is, what the infrastructure can handle. Like Cami said, they might have the, you know, they just started the business, they have the cash flow, but they don't have the infrastructure. It's you and Cena right now, and we're getting into our first full-time employee, so we actually can't handle the leads. It's not about paying for them at the moment. So that's a big concern. And then, of course, you want a sustainable growth rate. That's where Cornerstone is at right now. We have the team, we have, we have the cash flow to do it, but we want sustainable growth rates so that our, our, our team is actually comfortable as we grow. So we tr literally try to bring on only five to six people a month. So those are a couple of mental model shifts when you think about marketing that I think will help you navigate. Next thing, I wanna to talk to you guys about websites. We, everybody have a website for their business, I assume, right? So I figured, hey, if you're gonna hit a room full of 60 people, we all have a couple of things in common, this is gonna be one of them. The first thing you have to do when you create a website is you have to invoke emotion. So we're gonna talk about three concepts with websites. We're talking about hooking people, right? Converting people when they get there, because you gotta keep them on your website for more than eight seconds. Then you need to convert them to a client. And then once you have that process proven, you need to spend money to put more and more people through that process. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take, um, we're gonna create some emotion here. So 75% of uh, consumers admit to making judgments, crack judgments by the way guys, right? They're making them in like three seconds. About your entire business's credibility based on your company's web design. I asked Cindy, hey, can I wear shorts to the presentation today? Which I've done before, I just didn't wanna, <laughs> I didn't know if B and I would freak out if I did that. Because nobody takes you seriously in shorts if you're up here, right? That doesn't change the fact that I have 17 years of marketing experience. It's just that uh, they make crack judgments and we have a hard time getting over those judgments. Imagery, by the way, is the single greatest asset you can use to evoke emotion. Hey, Dev, can you pull up um, Elements Holistic Wellness? So this is one of the easiest things you can do and it's one of the best things you can possibly do. I'll tell you a really funny story. It's just a website, right? Or it's just a photo, it's not a call to action at all. We had a client come into our office and he said, hey, can you pull up Elements Holistic Wellness? So I, I typed in E-L, it popped up, uh, you know, it auto-filled, I hit enter. He's like, how did you type that so fast? I'm like, that's our client. He didn't know. He said, I want a website just like this because I literally had my daughter go see her yesterday because my daughter's stressed out and the second that I saw her website, she calmed down. Pretty cool. A little shout out to Michael. wish she was still here. Can you pull up the color wheel? So colors mat matter a lot. I'm gonna tell you two things about colors. One, um, colors actually mean something. I don't know if you guys know that. So here's the color wheel. Uh-huh. Gray's balance. You got green's peace, blue's trust, purple's creative, all that kind of stuff. And you can see just how consistent brands are in following this, right? So like, I was pretty surprised to find out like fast food companies, they're always uh, like kind of that McDonald's yellow and red. Why, because it makes us hungry. I wish humans weren't so predictable, but we are. <laughs> the other thing is uh, contrast, right? Don't, can't tell you how many websites I see with like a gray background and white text and you can't, you're like, you can't read it. So make sure there's a lot of contrast on your website. Here's a really interesting statistic. Okay guys, you gotta, like, you gotta lock this one down, all right? Especially anybody out there that's a potential client for us. Users will spend an average of 5.94 seconds looking at the website's main image. So the image you saw for elements you'll spend as much time looking at that image as you will reading the content on a website. Who reads every website word to word? Word to word? No, nobody, okay. Does anybody read anything when they go to a website or do you just? Yeah, somewhat? Sometimes, all right. So statistically, the, we have you pretty well beat because the people who don't read it all outnumber you like nine to one, all right? The, bo the bottom line is this, when I go to a Scott Trantel's heating and cooling website, I already know that he does heating. I don't need to read that he knows how to maintain my furnace. I just need to make sure that I trust him before I call him, and I usually do that through the design, not through the content. The content, guys, these days is for Google, Yahoo, and Bing. So as you're editing your website content, make sure you're not editing it for yourself. Make sure you're editing it based on keyword research that people are actually searching for your business. 
And then, of course, you all know this one. Who's, who's a patient person in the room? <laughs> yeah, I figured no, no hands would go up, right? Look at this. Look, look at Mark Wahlberg. I love this guy. That's about it right there. Freaking computer problems. I'll... Yeah. So in the t he actually takes longer to do this than people will stay on your website. All right? You... <laughs> There's a couple of things you can do. All right, you're going to pause that, Dev, or they won't listen to me anymore. <laughs> One, you guys need a great hosting account. If you're on GoDaddy or Namecheap or like I can go down the list of the rabbit hole and your website's taking five to six seconds to load because it's on a managed server with 60,000 other websites and you're wondering why it keeps getting hacked and it's really because other websites on the server are getting hacked and they're getting it. It's, it's crazy. Pay for high-end hosting. It will help you so much get your, your load time down to one and a half seconds, three seconds, because most of us are on our mobile phones anyway, right? In fact, 85% of people go on a, a website now, they think the mobile design of the website should look as nice or nicer than your desktop. Why? Because they're on their mobile phone more than they're on their desktop. Let's see if, I, if that stat's next. Oh, it's coming up, but it's something crazy, like 56% is mobile search, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Slow loading websites cost retailers last year $2.6 billion, because people just jumped off and went somewhere else. It's one, of the, it's one of the quickest things that you can affect today. You can go back to your office. Um, let me give you a quick Google search to write down. It's called Pingdom, P-I-N-G-D-O-M. Type in Pingdom speed test. There's a lot of factors when it comes to loading a website quickly. Pingdom's cool because it will actually show you server response time. So it'll specifically point out if your host is the problem. The graph it spits out is pretty complicated, so if you get a really terrible score, just call me and I'll read it to you. So here's the deal. Okay, the, the website, it's designed well. It looks pretty. Dev, you can go, yeah, that's perfect. All right, so, but we have to know, like, who is the website actually pointed at, right? So for a lot of us, we feel like we know that. Um, Dr. Hill, you guys are really, you're focused on auto accident injury cases, right? That's kind of like the main focus. So hopefully, we won't pull it up, we won't test you. Well, hopefully we pull it up, right? And there's some sort of auto accident photo imagery there because that's his niche, that's his specialty. Um, you gotta know your ideal customer and then market to them. I gave you guys a couple of ideas here. You can conduct interviews with your current clients, ask them a few questions while they're in your office. Talk to your sales team. Those guys are a wealth of information. You can use uh, business data, analytical research, right? Like what keywords are you targeting? Um, you can look at uh, related searches to those keywords and find out kind of who your ideal person is. Now we have social media. You can pretty much just tell what they had for breakfast if you want to jump on their Instagram account. And you can start marketing cereal and the whole nine yards. I did enjoy that burrito you had last night, Brent. That looked really good. <laughs> you want to be laser? Do anybody remember this guy? I love this. As soon as I thought of laser targeting, I'm like, I got to go. Laser. It's like the Diet Coke of laser targeting. Laser. Guys, we have, there's so much noise. Here's what I would tell you. So many of us are focused on the cost of doing an ad. We need to be focused on the fact that the ad is laser targeted. <laughs> if you can't afford to do five ads, do one that's laser targeted towards an audience, right? Versus doing one piece of creative for your entire company and then trying to get everything, right? A 38-year-old Latino mom is going to be a very different audience than a 24-year-old kid, right? So don't, don't create one piece of content. And, definitely target them very differently. Um, the bottom line is this. You, you want to, if, if you can get this dialed in and your creative actually targets the right client, not only will you have more right clients, but you'll have less wrong clients. I think a, a lot of times we get people in, I know if they, they can overwhelm your, overwhelm your sales funnel, if you get people in that aren't right for your business, but you have to weed them out, that's not right. Or your, your uh, one of the worst things that can happen is if your ads are targeted to the wrong audience and your services are too high, you're actually paying to bring in leads and your cost per acquisition is skyrocketing because as your salesperson says, oh, we're a $1,000 price point and they thought you were a $300 price point, you need to stay out of those markets altogether, even though the reports might look good because you might be getting 60 phone calls and you're thinking that's fantastic. But only 10 of them are from ideal customers. All right, let's get into the, the good stuff, right? Let's get into websites that convert. 46% of us say that we make a buying decision just based off judgment. Does it look good? If it looks good, I trust you. I'll never forget Britt and I, my wife, we went to uh, an auto repair guy when we moved to Troutdale because his website was awesome. Drove in, it was like a bad blind date. Drove right, right, right. Didn't go into the gate, you know, like, it was like 
junkyard dogs met us right at the front. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I made a visual judgment that he was awesome, and I went. Um, if he could have kept it up, he would have had a client. 70% of small businesses lack a call to action on the first page, on their entire homepage. In fact, if you go to Cornerstone, Dev, real quick, I'll use, I'll use us as a bad example. So if you go to our website, <coughs> eh, get started could be considered a call to action, I guess, but it's a pretty poor one at that. But the bottom line is we're actually trying to slow our growth rate. So for me, it's more about branding just a nice, comfortable, clean experience at the moment versus like, hey, click here and we'll do this or click here and we'll do that, which would definitely increase. In fact, we have a high bounce rate because of that and we're going to work on trying to fix that as we ramp up our team more. 96% of visitors will come to your website. They won't be ready to buy. This is a huge thing for you guys to know. So let's say we take 100 people that come to your website. Only four of them will actually be ready to make a purchase from your site. Don't let this surprise you because honestly, guys, these numbers you can work within just fine. If you're driving 1,000 people and you get 40 new customers a month, most of us in small business can't handle 40 new people a month. Or some of us are trying for 40 new people a month. But really, depending on your infrastructure, most people can work in that. And honestly, Devin and I see uh, websites and we drive three or 4,000 people to them each month and they're getting 200 new people. So they're, they're very good. But I think the problem here that most people forget is the 96% because they're living on only 4%. So if you want to make it easier on yourself, you can do two things. You could do the typical thing, which is I'm going to put out marketing to the extent that I need 500 people just so I get 20 new clients. Or you can say, hey, let's, let's add in some cyclical marketing. So has anybody heard of retargeting or stalker ads? Yeah. You should all put your hands up because I talk about it all the time. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. I like to joke that I'm a professional stalker. Why? Because retargeting ads work so well. You can do this on social media. You can do this on thousands upon thousands of websites on Google. And the bottom line is, once they come to your website, you already know if they come to Inspired Spaces, they're engaging in an interior designer, right? They want the, the staging services. They just may be looking at five other people. And that's a lot of noise, because if they're looking at 13 reference points before they make a buying decision, who's to say that they would come back to Cindy when that buying decision is almost over? But if Cindy's ad is rolling through on you know, the GQ magazine article that they're looking at or Joanna Gaines Magnolia Home website, which is part of retargeting, then now all of a sudden she's back in, in the playbook and she's an option again. So I always joke that I want people not to choose you. It sounds really weird to say, but it's true. See, if I choose a drain company right now, I'm choosing, if I choose anybody but Apollo Drain, I'm actually choosing not to use Apollo Drain, right? Because I see their trucks all the time. And so they're actually an option for me in my mind, right? because they've done a really nice job branding. So it would be great to say, hey, if I use a financial planner and it's not Jonathan Johansson, I've actually chosen not to use Jonathan. Now, that sounds like a negative thing, but it's actually a really positive thing for him because that means that every, you know, I'm maybe using my cousin. By the way, I'm a client and a very happy client. <laughs> but the bottom line is so many of us are just never an option period, right? So I want a painter. I just have never heard of Brent. That's not the way you want to be. We talked about this, 58% uh, of searches are coming from mobile today. It's crazy. I, Devin and I were in the industry five or six years ago when we were like, it's about ready to cross the threshold of uh, surpassing desktop search. That was our pitch for a long time. Like, mobile's coming. Well, it's here. It's here to stay. Um, I think the only reason it hasn't, it's kind of tapered off a little bit is just because we still have desktop computers and they're so expensive we have to justify using them. You've got to design around a conversion goal. Pull up uh, Cody's website real quick. Cody did a really nice job at this. Um, he said, what, I asked him, what do you want? How do you want people to convert? Yeah, guys, this is a question you should be asking yourself right now. It's a rhetorical question. How do you want people to convert? Right? I'll give you two examples. Cody's easy. How is he converting people? Anybody want to shout it out? The opt-in. Like a gigantic opt-in form. right? And he's also got his phone number at the top, and that'll scroll with you as you, as you go, just in case you miss the opt-in form. Nice. And then if you get to the bottom, if you happen to go all the way down, he's got another opt-in form, just so you don't have to scroll up. Just to make it easy, right? Um, people have never been on this website before, and we want to make sure that it's easy. Um, I'll give you another one. We, um, we work with uh, a contractor who, she's always running and gunning. She's a solopreneur, right? So getting phone calls is really difficult. 
but she also doesn't check her email all that much because she's always out and about and she's not an email person. So for her, her call to action is text message. So you just have to understand like, how can I actually engage with somebody quickly? Because if you don't engage with them quickly, you're not gonna get them. So how can you kind of in integrate that into your business model as it stands? Your primary call to action should always be above the fold, right? You saw that right away. You guys didn't have to scroll before seeing it. Our little get started button is up there, if you can consider that a call to action. And then of course, anybody ever heard of the squint test? No? All right, moving on. Just kidding. If you squint at a website, you should know what it is. You should know what it is. Like right now, we have a soldering company, and love these guys, but they're engineers, and they're trying to have a hand in design, and I, I respect that. But right now, we have Mount St. Helens at the top of their website. And we don't agree with that as marketing guys. We're like, if I go to a soldering certification company, and I see Mount St. Helens, and it's a global company, they're traveling all over, he's in China right now, what does Mount St. Helens have to do with soldering? It should be, you know, something soldering related, I would think. That's just me. That's just me. So uh, I want to I want to make you guys sound smarter. Anybody ever heard of Hicks Law? Of course you have. Analysis by paralysis. This is the this is the uh, progression of the correlation. See how I use these all these big words of of the time it takes for you to make a decision is directly correlated to how many options you have to choose from. So if your website says, "Hey, we have 25 services. You can pick one of 25," it's like yeah. A great example of this is e-commerce, right? You don't see Amazon putting all their products on the home page. They have categories, right? Let's narrow it down and then expand it out in a funnel. <coughs> A&B testing, this is something that we're just now starting to do, but it's something that you guys should reach out to your web designers to do. It's awesome. It can be as simple as this, okay? 50% 50, 50 of people will see one thing. 50% of people will see another one. It could be as simple as start your free trial or start my free trial. Let's see what button works better. And you might find that 80% of people actually convert when, they're, when it says my versus your. It could be that simple. The other thing this works great for is like imagery. So um, right now we're building a website. We have the, you, kind of your typical service look for this heating and air guy. We also have a woman who's giving a testimonial. The call to action button is the same. We're seeing which photo actually converts better. Make sense? Yes? All right. So that's important. Your buttons don't need to say submit. You know that, right? Like you can make a button say whatever you want it to. Our button says you'll love Cornerstone. Uh, Jennifer Lilly's button says let's grab coffee, right? So I would definitely say with your call to action, make them personalized. It will give a sense of urgency. It will give a sense of kind of connection. And then here's, the, here's a big opportunity for you guys. You see Kyle with the video cameras and Nancy getting in the way of all that. Um, <laughs> You're going to convert 144%. Uh, you're, you're more likely to convert at 140% clip. I wish Andrew Cox was here. He'd be like, no, Mark, you're doing this wrong. Videos increase conversions by an average of 144%. It's a huge opportunity. Guys, video does not have to be that expensive. I asked Kyle, how do we, how do we actually do something like this for clients where it's affordable? And he was saying, one, you can bulk videos together. So let's say you got three or four ideas. We can get them written, we can get them filmed, and I'm just your video guy for three days. And so instead of having a $1,600 price point per video, you're paying for three days of time, right? It's just a different concept, but it's a way to get it a little bit, get it a little bit down. Isn't this cool? I mean, it just adds so much emotion to the, to the homepage. By the way, there's one of our clients, they're the largest sports facility on the West Coast. Pretty, pretty cool. Actually, when you drive over the rise in Norco, California, it's just, fields and fields and fields. And uh, here's one of my favorites. Stay away from pop-ups, guys. Uh, if you have a pop-up on your website, go, go home and turn it off. They convert at 3% and they piss people off at 97%. <laughs> <laughs> All right? So true. Just, I mean, yeah. They just don't. Anyway, that's my advice. All right. So now you got a website that hooks people in. They're, they're there for more than uh, eight seconds, they have a chance to get to know you. You've uh, worked on converting them with some calls to action. Devin's rapidly working on making sure this presentation can continue with a power cord. Thank you. And um, now it's about how the heck do I rank on Google? So this is really the meat of why you guys came, right? Because you're probably like, I'm not changing my website, but I do want to drive people to it. That is scary. Make sure that you work with a marketing company that can do both. 
Because if you're driving something to a website that's not converting, it's time to take a step back, make sure it converts. We had a, a tree company. They had an 80% bounce rate. Anybody know what bounce rate is? Yeah? So for those of you who don't know, a, a bounce rate is basically uh, them not engaging with your site beyond one page, right? But if we know people stay on for less than eight seconds, I just say, look, if you're not engaging more than eight seconds, most likely your bounce rate's really high. So we took this tree, this tree company from an 80% bounce rate down to a 25% bounce rate. Without spending a marketing dime, they immediately got twice the phone calls because they were converting twice as much. So it, it wouldn't be a presentation without a cat video. <laughs> it, just, it, it just wouldn't. Um, so I think Jen Lilly is the only real estate agent in the room, but really in a digital sense, you guys are all real estate agents because we need to think of that first page. If somebody searches for your business, this is something I hear really common. I'm, but Mark, I'm already on the first page. You just type in the exact Dr. Kasari and boom, I'm number one. Now you don't own any other listings on the first page, but you're, you're one of them, right? So when it comes to your business name, I would encourage you that Google page, if somebody typed in the Inspired Spaces in Oregon City, that you own that page. You are the, it's location, location, location. They, there is no competitors that compete with you on your page of Google. Now, when you get out to your services, a little different story, we know that. But here's why you'd wanna be on a search engine. 93% of all of our buying experiences, right, our online experiences began with the search engines in mind. Google now holds 76% of the market share. Ridiculous, crazy. Uh, you guys have all probably heard my joke, where's the best place to hide a dead body? It's the second page of Google. I thought I would back that up today. 75% of people never navigate past the first page. Um, it's probably 95% in my family. This is a really cool graph for you to know because it also shows just how important those first couple of rankings are. If you've ever gotten sick of hearing people say, I can get you number one on Google, there's a reason why they say it. Because if they can, then you're, con then you're getting 30% roughly of the traffic, right? Number two is gonna drop down somewhere. This graph is 15, those stats was 18, so it's pretty consistent. Number three is still consistent at 10. And then by the time you get to like below five on the first page, you, you're pretty much might as well be on the second page. This is also, as is, is kind of depressing as that is, it's also really exciting because if you can get three or four or five keywords into that number one position, your traffic can go up like 500%. So um, SEO comes in all forms. I think a lot of times when we work with SEO clients, they're like, Mark, I was kind of hoping for like 80 keywords being number one. And you're like, well, hold on. How much business can you handle? How many people are searching? Let's go for the right keywords, et cetera, right? Um, I think it's on here, but if it's not, I'll just, nah, okay, I'll wait, all right, all right. All right, leads from search engines close at a, a pretty high clip, guys. It's like 15% close rate if they're coming to you from a search engine because they get to know you so much. You gotta keep in mind there's a buyer's journey going on behind this, right? Um, and then roughly, if, you, if you're doing cold calling, you're closing like 1.7%. So if you're sending, a, a, you know, the, the poor lost puppy sales guy out on the, onto the streets in the rain, you, know, you might as well just run a search engine marketing ad and fire him. I mean, have him manage it. Um, no, 70% of people ignore paid ad searches and only choose to click on the organic. We'll get into like what these mean, but everybody know, this is gone by the way, because it's an old, old stat or whatever, old slide, but there's only three here now, and then there's, or, so you're looking at paid ads where you can actually pay to play, you'll be there tomorrow. And then this is SEO, where it takes about uh, four to six months on average for most industries, and maybe a year if you're extremely competitive. 46% of all the Google searches are local. 50% of all searches will be done by voice search by 2020. So you heard me ask Siri how to get to Dr. Kasari's office. I'm sure you guys are all doing that too by now. We're all, we're all going to voice search. Um, there's now an Alexa in our office. That's pretty fun. <laughs> if you haven't asked an Alexa, tons of questions. So real quick, okay. I wanted to get into, out of presentation mode, into meat and potatoes mode. Um, so if you come up to this one, Dev, this is Carriage House Medicine, amazing naturopath. She's my, been my naturopath for 10 years. She's had this website for 12. It has never ranked on Google ever. Ever. That's great, 12 years she's had the same website. All right, now show them the website. Is it? It's cute, right? 
It's old. Oh, my goodness. You guys are so judgmental. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's normal. We just learned that, right? Like half the room already made a judgment while it was loading slow. Um, so it's 12 years old, never rank on Google. Okay, I'm going to give you two quickies on stuff you can go home and do right now. One, if your website is not secure, you can make it secure. It's about 8 to 10 bucks a month. I think it's a racket, to be honest with you, because we're not selling e-com products. But thanks to Google and their infinite wisdom and the fact that fraud is like at an all-time high and only going up, uh, they're now asking every business online to get a, secur a security certificate. And that will say secure up there. Dev, do we still? Yeah. So pull us up. You'll see it. It'll switch. Whoop. And then it's got a little lock. It doesn't mean that I'm not selling your information. Of course I am. No, I'm kidding. I don't do that. Um, but it is what it is. And it's like 8 bucks. It will help you out. The other thing that they don't do is they, um, they just rotate with GoDaddy. So like every year, they get auto build. This is an easy one you can do. Google wants to know that you, as a business owner, plan to be around forever, right? Because at the end of the day, you got to understand that Google is just a recommendation engine. And so if, you're, if they're like, this guy's not getting into the game, they're, every year they're renewing their thing. They could be gone next year. But there's another nature bath in our area, and they went to the 10 years that you can renew a business name. <laughs> that they're planning on being around. Let's go with them. It's a very small factor, but it's a very easy one that you can do. And you know what the funny thing is? If you do want to go out of business, well, you can get your money back from GoDaddy. So there's a huge lack of content, right? You can see that. And then let's get, let's get technical. Dev, can you, can you show us the alt tag for this? We'll have some fun. Anybody know what an alt tag is? I mean, I'm, we're going to SEO school, all right? So, um, come on, Sam. Uh, sensory disabilities, like you can't see the page, and if you're using, like, if you've got somebody, if you've got the computer reading to you what the website says, the alt tag allows you to see the image. Holy ma macaroni! Uh, go back to this one real quick. We're gonna go there a little easier. Right click on this. All right, here's what you want to do. Go to your website. Well, we do need the page source. I'm glad you have it. So right click here, guys. You can do this on any image. Oh, you can't. It's my, it's my computer. <laughs> two, two, double. You'll double that. <laughs> I asked if you wanted to bring a mouse. All right. So, guys, this is your number one. I'm going to say this a little later. This is like your number one way that you can detect whether your SEO company is working for you or not, right? So, as Sam beautifully said, yes, there is a consumer pur purpose for this. Wow, you guys can't read that at all. Sorry, I can't even. Oh, now I can. Um, there is a consumer purpose if you, uh, you know, are hearing impaired and things like that. They do have title tags now for images and stuff that you could. Um, it's almost like digital braille. An alt tag specifically is the text for Google, Yahoo, and Bing in search engines that describe the image and why you put it there in the first place. This is a huge SEO opportunity. It's also like SEO 100, right? This is uh, not even in your AP classes, if you will. So it means that if you have an SEO person and you right click on an image and it's like this image and you don't see the, the letters ALT equals and then like a really cool description of your business and how that photo relates to that service, then you know that your SEO company isn't doing anything because that's like the number one thing that we would check. So now if you can get rid of this, Dev, and go to page source, here's a really, really funny one for her. I, you all right? We got this. Maybe. We've been hijacked. Man, she's just giving you. All right, so you guys might not be able to see this either, but this is really, really funny. All right, so if you come up to page source, now you also have a meta description of your website. This is what describes your business as a whole. This is pretty easy stuff, right? SEO, honestly, guys, not that technically challenging. It just takes a lot of time. You might be saying, like, why is SEO so freaking expensive? Well, it's because it just takes a ton of time. And if it's done wrong, the, the ramifications are huge. Because the one thing as business owners you cannot do is lose time. If you do your SEO wrong in a year, there, everybody, even, including me, is going to tell you it's going to take six months. So that means if it's not working on day two, you're like, no worries, this is totally normal. So I'm going to wait six months. It's still not working. Oh, crap, I just lost six months. 
So you want to hire somebody really reputable, those people are charging money, etc. Yeah, here's this is my favorite thing. The, the description of their website is, and I quote, most important keyway, keyword phrases, more keyword phrases, even more keyword phrases to less important keyword phrases. So sadly, I did, a, I did do a search for carriage house medicine, more keyword phrases, they still didn't come up. Anyway, I just thought you guys would get a kick out of that because I'm like, why aren't you ranking? And then I realized their web designer did that. The other thing is, if you, if you go back to that real quick, it's built on a, I don't, it's not built on a template per se, but it's built like, it was one of those web designers that like built a website and then cloned that website and built another website and then cloned that website and built another website and they all look the same. Um, and so she actually has this, the key, well here, no, come out, come out, come out. So she has, she has the key meta description here, meta description here, and then I think there's a third one at the bottom because there's three websites in like one. Anyway, it's the wrong way to do it, right? So her metadata sucks, her, her title, her, she has no alt tag whatsoever. Uh, the, the title tags are non-existent, they're not in the correct order. And the other thing is, if you're gonna search for her, you're gonna search for like Nature Path and Troutdale. The word Nature Path doesn't appear on her, on her homepage at all. What? <laughs> this isn't complicated, it just needs to be done right 12 years ago. Imagine what her practice would look like today if she had somebody who did this right. And I, and I guarantee what's gonna happen to you guys is you're gonna leave here, you're gonna get calls from your clients, you're gonna get fires you gotta put out, you got um, employees wanting to go on medical leave, you gotta, ah! and you're not gonna look at your alt tag because you're gonna be like, well, that sounds complicated. And then 12 years from now, you're gonna go like, crap, why aren't I on that cruise ship? <laughs> it's because I don't have meta descriptions. All right, here's what, here you go. So can you, if you go back to, uh, Carriage House Medicine, real quick, Dev. We're gonna, we're gonna get some community involvement. Can you guys find a call to action? No. That's a trick question. I don't, I don't think there is a call to action. Oh, contact us. Yes, I see it. What would you click if you wanted to quote eliminate the root of your illness. Yes, I do. I want, I do want to eliminate the root of my illness. What would I do? There's no, it's like good, good luck. No button. Can you find a clear conversion goal like with Cody? I couldn't. All right. Can you find the phone number without searching for it? Does it look You can't, yeah, you can, I, try, I actually tried to click that. I'm like, well, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. That doesn't work either. And I will tell you this, if you click the phone number, like, because, you know, 60% of us are using our phones, that doesn't work either. Okay, we got five minutes, so we're about to uh, auction talk, all right? You guys ready? All right, go over to Cody's website. Here's the deal. Cody's website, totally different. It is secure. Doing it right. Voila. It's registered for 10 years. The content has 1,900 words on it. The images all have descriptions that describe the business, the location, the services, the meta description, the meta tag, are, they're perfect because I wrote them myself. <laughs> Before I touched this website, I asked Devin, hey, what keywords need to go into this website to be as high performing as absolutely possible? By the way, Deb, just, out of curiosity, just do a search right now for blinds in Oregon City. Um, can you find a clear call to action? Of course you can, you found two. Um, you already know, get a quote, da, da, da. You found all that, you found all that, you found all that, all right. So if I'm right or if I'm embarrassed, let's see. Um, blinds in, in Oregon City, scroll down. Where are we at? No, blinds in Oregon City, sorry. I don't wanna be embarrassed, Doug. <laughs> this is the exact one I searched. They, they tell you in marketing school, don't ever do uh, presentations where you're live online. Keep going down. These are the organics, right? So we're somewhere in here. Or we're embarrassed. I don't know. Sweet. All right. We like literally don't even have time to scroll up. Um, all right. So why in the world is Cody doing an unbranded website? Um, the bottom line is right now he's with a corporation that could alter his uh, rankings at will. Like he doesn't have any control of it. So he wanted control of it. Okay, I'm gonna get into this because this is huge. SEO secrets. I'm glad you guys saw that number one. See how fast number one goes by? Anyway, 
Um, sales traps. All right, here's the deal with SEO, guys. Not all keywords are created equal. If you guys find that uh, uh, one keyword could bring you as much traffic as 50 keywords, right? So be careful there. These are the sales traps of SEO. SEO takes a ton of time. So don't ever fall for signing up for an SEO like at 200 bucks a month because nobody does good SEO for a less than minimum wage. Not in the US anyway. I, mean, I don't know where else. Beware of SEO guarantees. Guys, it, we don't control Google. I don't even know if Google can control Google. So, Not right? So beware of anybody who says, oh, I guarantee you'll be on the first page. Typically with that, what they do is they find a keyword, actually Dex, you know, the phone book, they're coming out with a guarantee right now. And they're saying, hey, we'll guarantee you this placement, but guess what, their budget is based on the keywords you choose. So like it, the guy was telling me, you can get up to like six grand a month or eight grand a month because they want so much overage of what they know they need to make sure that they can work extra hours to guarantee it. So you will pay for it, trust me. Don't, don't sign up with any SEO company that can't manage your website. Uh, we had a client um, who uh, was with an SEO company. They didn't even have a login to his website. Like, how, what, what SEO are they doing? That's, it's like Brent saying, I'm gonna paint your house and you don't tell them your address. Um, all right, let's get into the SEO BS. Remember that? Oh, that was, that was, you could smell that in the theater. All right. You want to make sure you check your monthly analytics report. Here's what you're looking for. You're looking for rankings, you're looking for traffic growth, you're making sure your bounce rate's low, and you're making sure the report is consistent. A lot of people will give you what they want to give you to paint the picture they want to paint. So if you look at January's and the report actually looks different than February's, and it looks different than March. I'm not talking about the numbers, I'm talking about the actual KPIs, right? The actual stuff. So this month I'm telling you about your rankings, next month I'm telling you about your growth rate, um, yeah, you're only telling me what you want me to know. I want just a consistent automated report that always shows me the goods and the bads. And then of course, are you part of the plan? SEO is really technical. It shouldn't be a mystery. You guys should be able to at least know what's going on, be kept in the loop, be able to call and say, hey, what are you guys doing this month? Devin and I meet with our clients on a monthly basis to make sure that they're all kept in the loop. And then of course, um, the easiest thing you can do to detect some SEO BS is look at your alt tags. If, if your images aren't even being described, you can be rest assured that the technical part isn't being done either. Jen, we have like one more, two, oh, gee whiz. All right, here's what I gotta say about Google Ads. Yes, it is true, only 30% of people will click on a paid ad, doesn't matter at all. It's pay per click for a reason. This is really cool, you guys can turn it off, on, pause it when you go on vacation. This is something you can control the budget and you can be there tomorrow. It's something where you can actually target specifically Oregon City and if they work in Clackamas and they go out to Clackamas, is that, that's not far enough. If they go to Portland, right, and they search for Oregon City, they won't even be able to find it. They have to be physically at a router in Oregon City. That's how targeted you guys can get, okay? And then, of course, the cool part is, it doesn't matter that it's 30% of the traffic because it's pay-per-click. You're basically free on top the whole month unless they click on your ad. So it's a really cool way, if you don't have a huge budget and you can't do SEO, to bring in that cash flow to start getting going. Um, the biggest thing I see with people, they don't conduct any research on the budget whatsoever. And I will say this, okay, reputation company test right here. Here's what you do. If, you, if you're not signing up with Cornerstone, because we're amazing, but if you're signing up with somebody else, you get the budget finalized, and right before you sign the agreement, you say, hey, I really wanted to add Gladstone too. And if they're like, oh yeah, we can add Gladstone, then you fire them right away. Because that means that they need to go back to the drawing board and change the budget because the budget didn't allow for Gladstone in the first place, right? So if you try to add it and they say, yeah, sure, we'll add that in for free, no worries. That's not how it works, right? You need the money to get into the clicks in Gladstone, otherwise you're dropping overall everywhere else. Oh, I got like 10 seconds left. <laughs> guys, uh, here's, another, here's another big one, all right? Don't use AdWords Express. If you guys are at home using AdWords Express, pause it, call Devin. We'll get you on the, on the big boy version. Okay? It's going to allow you to actually do some real targeting. And here's the other kicker that's hugely important. Stay away from any broad match terms. Um, we had a landscaper who came to us. He was, he, one of his best keywords was the word concrete. Concrete. He's like, I don't even do concrete. Mark, I'm like, yeah, you do. You, you have decorative concrete in your keyword list, and it's broad matched, which means concrete mix, concrete trucks, Cement mixers, the whole nine yards, it just broad matches it out. You have to protect yourself from Google. I'll end with this. When we do Google ads for companies, 
they, they, don't they think they're hiring us to manage the campaign and like make it perform better. Honestly, they're hiring us as bodyguards to protect them against Google. Because Google gets paid per click. You get paid when people call you. That's two very different dynamic payment models. Okay? So there is a reason why broad matching is the default keyword match type. Because Google doesn't care if it's concrete or you know, cement mixing truck. As long as you're getting clicked on, they're getting paid. And you need somebody like Devin to go in there and be like, this needs to be hyper laser, you know, Austin Powers with sharks and laser beams on their head so that you only get the clicks you want. And then you'll only get the clients you want, and you'll start making money without having to spend a ton. <sighs> hey, guess what? This was the bonus material we didn't get to, so I'll, I'll make sure you get it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>